San Antonio starts right now. Who knew what and when? Coming up, two federal investigations are now underway into the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Everything we know so far. Outside with live cam, we've made it to midweek spring break 2023. Another seasonably cool morning out there. And Mike has us on the lookout for a shower or two. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, the 15th of March. Thanks for joining us. And I'm looking forward to it warming up just a little bit to the 70s today. We've got to warm things up today because Mike said it's going to cool right back down. Well, we got a couple of days of, of warmer temperatures. Yes. We did hit 70 yesterday. Going to make it up in the low 70s again today. And as far as a shower today, uh, it, we still have very dry air out there. So if anything were to fall, it would uh, probably just evaporate. But we do have more rain in the forecast. And and as far as the next few days, I think today is going to be kind of the quietest day around here. We'll get breezy in the afternoon. We've got some clouds hanging around here right now. 57 degrees, so we're, we'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches. Low to mid 50s in portions of the hill country. Very consistent temperatures right now. And uh, again, the dew points are very, very low compared to the actual air temperature. So we got this dry layer in here, which is why I don't think we're going to see anything as far as any showers. Oak went up yesterday. Pine and Hackberry are also on the moderate side. Mold and mulberry are low. And uh, throughout the rest of today, 67 at noon, 73 high temperatures. So right in the range of normal southeasterly wind 10 to 20 miles per hour. So again, a little bit of a breeze. Now maybe a shower tonight. Then we got better rain chances coming on in here tomorrow and then especially tomorrow night as the front moves through the potential for some strong to severe storms. And then yeah, make sure you find your heavy coat because this weekend hunker down inside. Best advice details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Right now, the search is on for three men and a woman who deputies say caused a big mess. We're told it all started yesterday afternoon when they robbed a man at gunpoint at a Circle K near Foster Road and Ben's Engelman Road. A group took off in a stolen car, but investigators believe they realized they left something behind and began chasing the victim in his car, firing shots. That chase ended in a crash involving an 18-wheeler near FM 78 and Wood Lake Parkway. The suspects took off on foot. No one was hurt in the robbery or the crash. Before we get to our next story, a warning that some may find the video disturbing. Officers shot and injured a man they say pointed a gun at them. A tense situation unfolded yesterday in a southeast side neighborhood near New Silver Springs Road and Loop 410. Our Jonathan Cotto has the story. My wife has been held up inside our, our, our mobile home since 1.30 today with a gun prepared for all hell to break loose. Residents on high alert as a police standoff turned shooting unfolded in this southeast side neighborhood. San Antonio police say the suspect in the silver car you see here had an active felony warrant for domestic violence. Officers say he took off when they tried to stop him. The officers attempted to stop him. He fled down South Cross. He's down there about probably close to a half mile. Uh, he had a gun. Sky 12 flew over the scene on South Cross Ranch Road just east of Loop 410. That's where police say the suspect held a gun to his own head and pointed it toward officers, leading them to open fire. One neighbor says the incident is nothing out of the ordinary here. It happens all the time. The, the, the apartments, that, the, the, the mobile home park that's at the very end, all hell breaks down there on, a, on a, almost a daily basis. There's gunfire. The chief says a woman was in the car at one point, but she was able to get out. SAPD has not identified the woman or the suspect, a man believed to be in his 40s. He was taken into custody and to the hospital. Jonathan Cotto, Keysat 12 News. SAPD is still in the preliminary stages of its investigation. They will review body cam footage. Department policy calls for video of police shootings to be released within 30 days. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. And we are learning more about investigations underway into the second largest bank collapse in U.S. history. Sources say both the Justice Department and Security Exchange Commission are investigating the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. ABC's Lindsay Watts explains what this means. Two separate investigations now underway into the sudden collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. According to two people familiar with the situation, the probes are in the preliminary stages and it's not clear whether any wrongdoing has been committed. The uh, SEC and the Department of Justice both will be interested in 
who knew what when and who did what when. Investigators want to know who traded when and did were t people tipped off. Sources tell ABC News that part of the FBI's early focus will be looking into whether any of Silicon Valley's senior leadership got unusual bonuses or sold stocks in the days leading up to the bank's collapse. In short, is there any evidence of insider trading? Barron's now reporting that according to SEC filings, two top Silicon Valley executives sold shares in the company shortly before it collapsed. CEO Greg Becker sold nearly $3.6 million of company stock less than two weeks before the firm disclosed extensive losses that led to the failure. Senator Elizabeth Warren telling MSNBC that any executive bonuses and stock sales should be taken back from CEOs and high-level bankers. They took on all that risk, made themselves more profitable right up to the day that the bank exploded. The CEO of Silicon Valley Bank did not return ABC News request for comment. Wall Street taking a breath Tuesday as regional bank stocks stabilized, showing panic in the market may be subsiding. This morning, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that the Federal Reserve is rethinking a number of its own rules when it comes to mid-sized banks, a move that could soon require those banks to meet some of the same standards as the nation's largest banks. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank is hitting close to home for some businesses here in San Antonio. A few days before the collapse, Plus One Robotics celebrated a successful $50 million fundraising effort. That money had been deposited with Silicon Valley Bank alongside most of the company's operational funds. Had they not made their resolution on Sunday night and we were still in that situation today, we'd have to find some other way to make payroll. Also here in San Antonio, Secure Logics' CEO says the bank's failure also froze up their funds at first, which would have meant finding a workaround for payroll. Both companies say they'll be diversifying their banking in the future. Right now, 437, 57 degrees. Our case at Cruz taking in all the action at South by Southwest. Still to come, what they found at a special red carpet premiere. And in case you missed it, last night a big win for the San Antonio Spurs after the break highlights from the AT&T Center of their matchup with Orlando. And let's look at the roads with Transguy looking over at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller where things are looking good and pretty quiet there at Highway 281 at St. Mary's. And outside with live cam, storms are back in the forecast. Mike will tell you when, coming up right here on GMSA. Now to a little action from the Silver and Black. Spurs hosting the Magic last night at the AT&T Center. One of the big moments of the night, a new Spurs franchise record for threes made in a single game with 22. Final score, Spurs rolls past Orlando, 132-114. And here's what Pop had to say after the game. Zach and uh, Jeremy were outstanding. Uh, they were special tonight. If you make 22 threes, you're going to have a pretty damn good night. That's just the way the rules are. We don't do that very often, but we did it tonight, uh, and it was fun to watch. Uh, more importantly, we had 39 assists, uh, which is really fantastic. So all in all, it was a good night for the boys. Thank you, Pop. All right, next up for the Spurs, we'll be back in action tonight. So a quick turnaround, the host, the Mavericks, tip offset for 7.30 over at the AT&T Center. Well, well done. That's good news. Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. Time now 441 and 57 degrees for now. The company behind chat GPT says it's the latest AI technology has human level performance. Details next in your GMA First Look. This morning's GMA First Look, ChatGPT Upgrade, OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, which came on the scene about four months ago, out with its latest innovation, ChatGPT4. We're really kind of at the beginning of seeing AI's impact, but this is a sign of another way that that impact is likely to ramp up, and I think we're going to see it you know, affect people more in their, in their daily lives. Snapchat recently launched a chatbot, MyAI, supposed to be safer for teens. But when Washington Post reporter Jeffrey Fowler tested it out, the conversation turned inappropriate at times. I asked it, hey, can you uh, give me some advice on what kind of beer to have at my, my 15th birthday party? But that didn't stop it from giving me advice that just wasn't appropriate for a 15-year-old. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll see if this emerging technology is safe for teens. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York.
The stars are shining bright for the South by Southwest Film Festival. Our crew, RJ Marcus and Andrew Wilson, got a glimpse into Hollywood after being on the red carpet for one of this year's big world premieres, a movie called Probabilista. Take a look. This is the 37th edition of the Film and TV Festival right here at South by Southwest in downtown Austin. And it's just a mix of tech, film, and music industries all combining for these huge events throughout the rest of this week. And right behind me is the Paramount and Stateside Theaters. This is where all the Red Gala premieres are taking place, all the big sort of world premieres that are happening this week in downtown Austin. And also just another place where filmmakers, movie lovers, and fans can unite. I love this festival. I remember it so clearly and I've been looking for an opportunity to come back because of the audience. The audience is so like this is your your festival and I, that's a good festival when it's owned by the audience. Why did you guys decide to have the world premiere for this film here at South by Southwest? Well it just feels like such a fun, fun, warm, like unpretentious, like very inviting environment. And it's not just the big world premieres that are taking place here at South by Southwest, there are also documentaries and short films being premiered as well and that includes a San Antonio filmmaker who wrote and direct a short film that he's going to be world premiering here later on this week. His name is Fidel Ruiz Hilly and his movie is called Dead Enders. Let's find out what he had to say about his project. Our, our little horror comedy short film we we shot in San Antonio like towards the end of 2021 about a young disillusioned girl who works at who works a late night shift at a gas station she has no real hopes and dreams in life. And after these uh, these mind controlling bugs take over the world, she kind of has to get her priorities back in order. It got into like one of our dream festivals, South by Southwest, which we're just really excited for. The South by Southwest Film and TV Festival runs through March 19th. And of course, if you want more information on all things South by Southwest, head over to KSAT.com. We also got an inside look at the Creative Industries Expo. That was a lot of fun. Also, check out our KSAT YouTube page for our latest live streams. Reporting from downtown Austin, RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, so as RJ just said, just a reminder, don't forget to check out the live streams from South by Southwest on the KSAP YouTube page. You can also find complete coverage on KSAP.com. Just look for RJ and Andrew's stories there. And let's take a the, look at the roads at Trans Guy, looking over at I-10 in Woodstone. Looking good there, and also at I-10 at Crossroads. Very quiet this morning. It kind of looks like spring break. It, it kind of does. I saw uh, something unusual on my way into work this morning on 281. I was southbound, headed towards downtown. Just north of the airport, there was a jet ski laying on the shoulder, <gasps> and then a truck and a trailer. So somehow, oh, I guess the, no. the jet ski went off, off. the trailer yeah. Yeah, and, went, and went airborne. So it looked like everybody was okay. It had just That's happened, though. Not good. Not good no, at no, all. No. Um, <laughs> uh, it's tricky moving a jet ski in the middle of the night sometimes. Yes, yes. but at least it, you know, there wasn't a lot of traffic. Was that the voice of experience? Uh, <laughs> jet ski no, I am yeah. try to be super safe when it comes to hauling watercraft. Or anything. Yeah. Yes. Good idea. Yeah. All right, if you are going to be on the water, thinking about being on the water today, Okay, tomorrow, well, probably not. And then forget about that because the water is going to get real cold as is everything else by the uh, by Friday in the weekend. Really cool picture from a couple of uh, evenings ago and that nice orange glow right there. Again, it almost looks like a just a painting right there along the uh, horizon. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. So we are starting off with a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning and that's keeping temperatures very, very consistent. We are in the well, averaging mid 50s around the area, just a few degrees above the normal low temperature right now. And notice how the wind is now out of the east. It was northeasterly and now it's uh, swinging around to the east. It's going to swing more around to the southeast. That will signal the return of or the beginning of the return of the humidity. It's still very dry out there right now, which again is why I really don't think we're going to see anything as far as the sprinkle there. There could be something, especially out to the west later on today, but um, the air, is, like I said, is so dry. Anything that falls will probably evaporate before it reaches the ground. We will be up into the mid 60s at noon. Some sunshine thrown in and then 73 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. Wind's going to pick up a little bit, so it will be somewhat on the breezy side. Now, this computer model does have a couple little sprinkles out there. 
Again, I'm not really buying into it that much. Uh, if something does make it down to the ground, okay, but I think uh, today is pretty much going to be rain free. Then we go into the overnight hours and as the moisture tends to kind of come back on in here, we may have a few showers scattered about the area and then some during the day tomorrow. Now, as we go into tomorrow evening, as the front approaches, notice how we're going to get a line of showers and thunderstorms to develop late tomorrow night, early on Friday morning. Some of those could be potentially a strong to severe high winds and hail would be the biggest threats with this. And once again, storm prediction center does have us in the most of the area with some scattered uh, potentially severe storms late tomorrow night, early, early on Friday. Here's what the humidity is going to be doing. Dew points again are very, very low. They start to come up this afternoon, then really come up overnight into tomorrow morning. That's why I think we have the better rain chance for a little bit of light sprinkles tomorrow in the morning hours. And then during the day, we'll have more of those showers. And then here comes that drier air, and that's going to move through right about the time those storms are going to be right along that front, just being pushed out ahead of and right along that front as it moves on through here on Friday. So temperatures with low eight, low 70s today, low 80s tomorrow. And then look at that 50 Friday, Saturday, 45 Sunday, Monday as well. Plus you got the rain mixed in here, especially on Sunday and Monday. Just kind of raw a couple of days around here, but at least we're going to be seeing some uh, some decent rain. It looks like so that's good news. 67 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature then makes it up to uh, 73. It's going to be somewhat on the breezy side today. Then we get into tomorrow and that's when we'll see a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms uh, scattered about during the day, but especially as that front moves on through late tomorrow night early on Friday and we'll start off Friday early early in the morning in the 60s and then temperatures just drop down throughout the day in behind that front it is going to be windy again some of those storms late tomorrow night Friday could be on the uh, strong to severe side Saturday pretty much rain free just cold and then cold and wet Sunday and Monday got a new green tie ready to go for Friday Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a green sweater to go with it? A green sweater. I know. Yeah, probably, right? <laughs> At least into work. I was going to borrow Mike, one of Mike's sweater vests, though. Ah. Yeah. Ah, yes. Okay. I don't have... Not Kelly. green? Don't have Kelly green, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, 452 <laughs> is 56 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, two, four, six, Fireball five, Daily four, two, six, eight, three, Fireball eight. Cash five, 20, 21, 25, 34, 35 and Mega Millions, which is up to $254 million. 1, 7, 23, 38, 55. Mega Ball 2, Mega Plier 3. What the heck is going on out here? Everyone's favorite football coach is back today. Season 3 of Ted Lasso, premiering on Apple TV+. Plus. Star and series co-creator Jason Sudeikis tells me Lasso has been one of the highlights of his career, and he loves being recognized on the street for it. It's great because I get called coach all the time, which was always like something that, that I just love. You know, it's like, hey, coach, you know, like I, I, I don't mind it. You know, uh, my, my son gets a kick out of it, too. He's like, people love this show. I'm like, yeah. We're told season three of Ted Lasso will be an ending of sorts, the culmination of this particular storyline. It's not clear if the show will live on in some form after season three or if there will be a spinoff or what. Big news from Lindsay Lohan. The Mean Girls star is pregnant with her first child, sharing a photo of a baby onesie on Instagram and writing, we are blessed and excited. She married husband Bader Shamos last July. Queen guitarist Brian May now officially a knight. King Charles doing the honors at Buckingham Palace Tuesday. The official Queen Twitter account sharing a pic of the ceremony. And happy birthday to Judd Hirsch. The Fableman's Oscar nominee is 88 today, while music superstar Will I Am is 48. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 456 and 56 degrees for now. Ahead in our next half hour, rough weather still slamming a big part of our country, especially for those over in California. We'll take you back to the hardest hit areas and show you where the storm system is heading next. Quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking at Loop 1604, Mideo Creek, and also Highway 281 at Winding Way where things are quiet. But we will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos, who's in the studio for all the details in just a minute. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Let's look out there with a live cam. Unseasonably cool right now at 56 degrees and looking for warmer weather tomorrow. But then we're going to have to check in with Mike because things are going to change this weekend. That's right. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Wednesday. It is March 15th. 
Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you like the cold weather because that's going to happen soon. But some wild weather over the next uh, five to seven days. And Mike is here with kind of a preview of what to expect. Yeah, today is going to be the quietest day really of the next uh, four or five days or so. And then things really start to get going here. We've got a chance for severe storms. We've got cold temperatures, wet and cold. 56 right now. We're still above the normal average low temperature right now. It is uh, seasonally cool out there. Grab a jacket, definitely. And we do still have very dry air with uh, dew points remaining a good uh, 15 degrees or so below what the actual air temperature is 73 for a high temperature later on this afternoon, which is right where it should be. We are going to have a lot of clouds, though, so it may seem cooler than that. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot and the allergens oak went up from the previous day's reading. Pine and hackberry are both on the moderate side, just little bits of mold and mulberry out there. Very consistent temperatures this morning. Thanks, uh, thanks in part to that cloud cover keeps things nice and uh, steady all around. So we're averaging right around mid 50s, 55 Helotus, 54 in Bulverde and Gonzalez. You're one of the cooler readings out there in Seguin at 51 degrees. And like I said, 56 out there at the airport. So again, cloudy, coolish this morning, jacket weather, and then most of the cloudy today. If there is a sprinkle out to the west this afternoon, just a mention of it, I think the air is still fairly dry enough to where if anything were to fall, probably would evaporate before it ever reached the ground. Low 70s, normal high temperature, breezy today. Winds going to start to shift around to the southeast. That's going to pull in more humidity around here. And so therefore, late tonight and early tomorrow morning, a couple of showers around the area. So may have a damp commute as well. Then we'll have a few showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Then it looks like another and those will be especially off to the east, but then uh, some more potentially strong to severe storms as that front moves through late tomorrow night. We will hit the low 80s tomorrow. Don't get used to that because it all changes overnight into Friday. That big front moves on through here. Temperatures will drop down throughout the day. We'll be right around 50 or even cooler than that in the afternoon. Very windy, cold as well on Saturday. Then add to it rain on Sunday. So cold, rainy, wet, bone chilling, however you want to describe it. And that's going to be the case on Monday as well. By the way, spring starts late Monday afternoon. Ain't going to feel like it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Well, the forecast all over the place, Mike, but thankfully uh, the traffic has stayed pretty steady here on Transguide. Notice some flashing lights out there in the distance at 35, but uh, right now nothing is being reported by TxDOT. You can see at 35 at Alamo, things are moving along without really any trouble, but uh, be on the lookout. The really big uh, headline of the morning will be some of the overnight road work that is still lingering around the Alamo City. But you can see for the most part, our commute is shaping up to look pretty quiet, which has really been the case the last few days. Spring break has really given a lot of these early morning commuters a break on the road. So that's some good news. But as I mentioned, construction will be the big headline on the roadway. We have some that's taking place a little bit later this morning, but also overnight. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Let's talk about some of those travel times. If you're heading into the Alamo City this early in the morning, I 10 eastbound that journey from Bernie should take you about 24 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound from Bolverde. You should see about 28 minutes, but we are in the yellow there. So uh, remember uh, that there's tons of work taking place out there. Again, we'll get to that a little bit later, but right now, not too awful from New Braunfels. 35 southbound looks to be about 25 minutes at this hour. Let's get one last look at the roadways. 281 at Winding Way. Not a bad shot this early in the morning, but we'll continue to watch the roads closely and have those updates for you guys throughout the morning. Mark. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a police investigation is underway after an officer shot a suspect overnight. It happened at an apartment complex on the city's north side. Our Alyssa Cole joins us now with what we know so far this morning. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, Mark. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus arrived at the scene overnight on Colony Boulevard to give us an update on the shooting. He said the officer shot a man after a man jumped out of a second story window. Police are describing this as a disturbance call. Now, this happened just before midnight at an apartment complex near I-10 in Wurzbach. When officers got to the location, they saw a man jump out of a second story window from one of the buildings. When 
the officer approached the man, we're told he pulled out a gun, and that's when the officer pulled the trigger. He shot the man in the leg. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. We're told before all of this happened, the man allegedly assaulted a woman, which led to the initial 911 call in the first place. Now, McManus says the officer will be placed on administrative duty while the investigation continues. We do know the officer has been on patrol for less than a year, so not very long. As for the woman who was assaulted, it's unclear what her condition is. As soon as we get more information, we'll keep you updated on our website at ksat.com. Reporting live downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Other stories we're following this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting on the city's west side. It happened yesterday evening on Bandera Road, not far from Culebra. Police tell us a man and woman were in a vehicle when they started arguing, and that's when we were told the woman shot the man in the leg. He's in the hospital and is expected to be okay. The woman could face an assault charge. Seven people facing charges after the IRS says they scammed more than $100 million from stolen identities of accountants and taxpayers. They allegedly filed at least 371 false tax returns from 2018 through 2021. Allegedly, the group used stolen information to change the addresses of stolen identities to collect the tax return money. They would then put the money on prepaid debit cards and use money orders from grocery stores at low amounts to pay for items. They all face several charges of fraud and up to 50 years in prison. And now to the latest on those storms slamming both the east and west coast. California's governor has expanded the state of emergency as they brace for more flooding, possible mudslides and feet of additional snow from another atmospheric river. But across the country, extreme weather has delayed travel and left hundreds of thousands without power. ABC's Andrew Dimber is tracking the latest. This morning, people in Southern California staring down another atmospheric river. Heavy rain, strong winds, and more snow. Nearly 300,000 power outages reported overnight. In Northern California, a massive redwood tree fell onto this Bay Area elementary school. A girl inside suffering a head injury. I did check in with a teacher and um, she happened to be in the classroom at the time, so was able to support students um, and then just checking in with her after too and um, she's doing okay. In downtown San Francisco, wind gusts nearing 90 miles per hour, apparently shattering windows. Firefighters forced to close the streets 40 stories down below. This is something that is unusual, but we're also experiencing highly unusual weather. In Southern California, a rare high risk alert for flash flooding. Some mountain towns could see three more feet of snow in the coming days. The snowpack in parts of the state already nearly 300% above normal. The danger of heavy snow also on display in Minnesota, where the roof of this mall in Duluth collapsed. Meanwhile, in the Northeast, look at that, completely over the interstate. The first nor'easter of the season dumped nearly three feet of snow in parts of upstate New York and interior New England. Really heavy, really heavy snow, heavier than usual. Moving it feels like, you know, it's a workout. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 507, 56 degrees. And still to come, Apple's introducing a new way to shop for iPhones. Details ahead in your morning tech bites. Plus, new details in the abortion debate after the break. What's now on the line and being heard in court today. Let's look out there with live cam starting at a cool 56 degrees. If you like the warm weather, good news that's happening tomorrow. But if you like the cold weather, just wait for this weekend. We'll be right back. Happening today, a Texas federal judge is holding a hearing on the biggest abortion-related case since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year. The issue is medication abortion. Anti-abortion advocates sued the FDA over medication used in that process. The lawsuit is seeking several actions, including an injunction ordering the FDA to drop its approval of the drug. That would essentially block its use nationwide, at least temporarily. Reproductive rights advocates who are in favor of the medication say if the judge sides with the plaintiffs, it would eliminate the most commonly used method of abortion care. Today, both sides will have an opportunity to present their arguments. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized Pfizer's Omicron booster shot for kids under five years old who were previously vaccinated with three doses of the company's original vaccine. Children six months through four years old who completed their three-dose primary series with Pfizer and BioNTech's original monovalent shots more than two months ago can now receive a single booster dose of the updated shot. 512, 56 degrees. New AI features are coming to Google just ahead what we have learned overnight in your morning consumer news. 
Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But firefighters entering a burning house will one day save time when lives are on the line. Visualizing a patient's most recent scan will help speed up decision-making in the ER. And while the woolly mammoth is still extinct, that doesn't mean students can't take field trips to visit them. The metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. <coughs> this cough. <coughs> this will help. Vicks Vapor Rub? Vicks Vapor Rub's medicated vapors go straight to the source of your cough, so you can relieve your cough to breathe easier. Vicks Vapor Rub, fast acting cough relief. Want more from your vitamins? Get more with Nature's Bounty. From the first ever triple action sleep supplement to daily digestive support to more wellness solutions every day. Get more with Nature's Bounty. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's new way to shop for an iPhone. Apple is offering Shop with a Specialist, allowing customers to browse the latest iPhone models with the help of live assistants. The service's launch coincided with the new yellow iPhones. It can be accessed through Apple's website. Google is testing new AI tools for Gmail and Docs. It's supposed to help you get started when you get writer's block. The feature can help write a draft of your project. According to Google, just type a topic and a draft will be generated which you can refine and edit. And just in time for March Madness, YouTube TV has added multi-view streaming. The feature allows four streams at once. You can take each one to a full screen view and switch the audio to your preferred stream. Right now it's limited to sporting events. Four different basketball games at once? I thought this feature was supposed to be a game changer. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Now to an update on a local story we first told you about last week. Days after his car was towed, he was left standard, stranded. Things are very different for a disabled veteran from here in San Antonio. His vehicle was towed from a handicapped parking spot at a laundromat, one he says he had parked in many times before. Many KSET viewers reached out to help. As Patty Santos explains, the parking problem is being resolved. This is how KSAP found Patrick Winters last week, stranded. Because I have stiff person syndrome, which is a very rare autoimmune disease, uh, it's hard for me to walk any distance. Bear Cresswells towed his car from a handicap zone. The disabled veteran did not have this now state required handicap plates, only the traditional DV plates. At the time, he didn't know the law had changed in 2022. Our hands are tied on this end, like we. There's nothing that we can do. But he was pretty upset that his pleas to the towing company fell on deaf ears that night. I called him twice. I'm a disabled vet on a walker, have no way getting home, and I need you guys to do this. And she said she just could not do that. The next day, his calls and our continued calls to the owners were not returned. Five days later, the owners are personally handing Winters his car back along with an apology. We wanted to make sure and do the right thing because that's all we're about. Winters was told a new tow truck driver misunderstood the company policy and made a mistake by towing a vehicle with disabled veteran plates. Uh, to make sure it doesn't happen again, they're helping him upgrade his plates according to state law. We actually put the paperwork together for you so that you can get your plates and stuff like that. Totally grateful for uh, what they've done today. The company is also throwing in a washer and dryer for his home. And I won't be spending any more nights at the Washitarian. Won't have to worry about parking in the wrong place. Patty Santos, Case Set 12 News. Awesome. Nice yeah, happy ending. Yeah. Great, nice. love that. Great follow up there. Yeah. Well, let's follow up on traffic this morning. Well, you know what, guys? Not a lot going on. Uh, thankfully, we've had a pretty nice break on the roads. So as we know, spring break is well in uh, session, but a lot of folks still have to head to work. So this is really what you can expect. The last few mornings have been copy and paste. Uh, thankfully, no major issues have been reported, at least just yet. But 35 at Olympia will probably get a little bit busier as the morning commute does get going. Same for 35 at Judson, but thankfully, nothing too bad at this hour. But as I mentioned, it's going to be overnight construction right now. And uh, in fact, we're going to see some of that take place a little bit later tonight. We have sign replacement that's going to start around nine this evening, and that's going to take us up till tomorrow morning around five. So ag again, if you're at home and you're an overnight or early bird commuter, just watch out because we will see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes at Villa Main Road and Southton Road. But thankfully, right here on the map, it's just plenty of green out there. You can see some of those active construction spots, uh, but no congestion has been really picked up over the last 
few days. So that's some good news to report. But back here in town, 281 and 1604, nice time to head out the door and get the day started. 1604 at Marbach, not bad at all. So again, uh, quiet roads is how we're starting this morning. So we're keeping it pretty nice over here in the traffic lab, Mike. Well, that's good news. Yeah. All right. When I first looked at this picture and it says the collard greens are bigger than pumpkin and I was like, where's the pumpkin? Well, there he is kind of hidden right there. Couldn't really oh, see him. Oh, yeah. There's the little guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't oh, know yeah, how yeah, big he yeah. is. Okay. Okay. In the second. That's, I was looking for a pumpkin pumpkin, so, and I don't know how that's big he is, but those things look like they're the size of banana leaves almost. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, clouds starting off this morning, but notice how it's uh, a fairly clear view, if you will, of the skyline because we've got still very dry air in place. Mid 50s, we're just a couple of degrees above the the normal low temperature, and the wind right now, which a little bit of a breeze, yeah, you definitely want a jacket, is shifting around to the east. It's going to shift around to the southeast more later on this afternoon. Then be somewhat on the breezy side, but that's going to start to bring the humidity back. We still have low enough humidity, this dry layer in the atmosphere. So if a shower tried to pop up on radar later on today. I think it would evaporate before it ever reached the ground. Not really buying into any sort of uh, showers around here today. Temperatures will bottom out at 54 this morning. A little bit of sunshine mixed on in here. Make it up into the mid to upper 60s at noon and 73 for a high temperature, which is just about a normal high. 74 being the normal high temperature. All right, here's computer model, and this is the, the rapid update model. And it's got one or two showers down there to the uh, west and to the southwest. Otherwise, just basically cloudy skies. A little bit of sunshine peeking on through. A couple of showers then will start to develop overnight, and these will reach the ground just because we will have more humidity humidity around here, so the atmosphere is going to be pretty full. And then throughout the morning hours, again, one or two sprinkles. Now, as we go into the afternoon, there will be a few showers and thunderstorms developing, especially off to the east. Some of those could be on the strong side. Then we get the next round, and this is along with the front moving through here. It's going to be late tomorrow night, early on Friday, and some of those could be strong to potentially severe. Again, Storm Prediction Center still has us in the scattered strong, severe storms, high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with any of these storms that do pop up again tomorrow night early on Friday. Here's what the humidity does today. Like I said, it starts to come back in here, then it really moves back in overnight and throughout the day tomorrow. Then the front moves through here and that pulls down that dry air. So that's going to be early morning Friday along with those thunderstorms. Here's a longer range computer model. And it's got a couple of showers around. This is got broad brush. Here's some of the uh, storms in the afternoon tomorrow. Then this is the batch that is associated with the front that moves on through here, gets on through throughout the day on Friday. So once we get done with those storms and showers early on Friday morning, we're just going to have basically cloudy skies, but it's going to be cold around here. Same thing on Saturday. Then Sunday we have another rain chance that's going to be moving on in, and that is also going to extend into Monday along with those cold temperatures. 67 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 73, basically normal this time of year. And then tonight, a couple of uh, light little showers early tomorrow morning, might have a damp commute tomorrow. A few showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, mainly to the east. And then as the front moves through late tomorrow night, early Friday, we'll have the potential for some strong to severe storms. Windy on Friday, temperatures will drop. We'll be in the 60s in the wee hours Friday morning, drop down to the 50s, even upper 40s. And then look at that, 50 is going to be the hot day as far as the weekend is concerned. Oh, my goodness. I say that with tongue-in-cheek. 45 Sunday and Monday. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> but look at Tuesday. Grilled cheese soup. Yes. And we thought we were done with that till this fall, perhaps. Nope. And this is going to change some outdoor plans for some folks. Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Especially being the end of spring break. Yeah. Good spring cleaning day Sunday. Movies, stuff like that. I love the idea of that. Actually making it happen. Mm, spring cleaning. So much. Maybe yeah. movies. <laughs> <laughs> the movie sounds yeah. good. 523, 56 degrees. The top prize for a lot of Texas is growing. It's now sitting at the biggest jackpot in more than 12 years after 76 drawings without a winner. Current estimated jackpot today's drawing is 53.5 million with an estimated cash buy of 33.1. That's the largest Lotto Texas prize since May 29, 2010. Back then, the jackpot reached an 
estimated $97 million. Now here's a look at last night's winning numbers. Looking at pick three, two, four, six, fireball five, daily four, two, six, eight, three, fireball eight. Cash five numbers, 20, 21, 25, 34, 35, and mega one, seven, 23, 38, 55, mega ball two, mega plier three. Good luck. Quentin Tarantino's final film? According to The Hollywood Reporter, the creator of such movies as Pulp Fiction and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has written and is preparing to direct The Movie Critic, set in late 70s LA. Tarantino has long said he'd only direct 10 films or retire before he turns 60. This would be his 10th movie and he turns 60 on March 27th. All of us have experienced very public relationships. It's really hard for me to let my guard down. Queen's Court triples down on the usual day dating show format. Queens, Tamar Braxton, Evelyn Lozada, and Nivea are each looking for love, with 21 potential kings vying for their hands, and Holly Robinson Pete and Rodney Pete overseeing it all. Even though these women are, are beautiful and successful, um, they still have struggled with the relationship part of it. And a lot of times they'll come across men that can't handle their position. And so it's Amazing that it's still similar to when we were dating. Queen's Court debuts Thursday on Peacock. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 56 degrees. Before we head to break, today is World Essential Workers Day. It's a good time to show appreciation to any nurses, firefighters, or police officers who cross your path. According to NationalDay.com, a nine-year-old girl found it in 20, founded it in 2021 when she saw people risking their health to help others during the pandemic. So remember, a simple thank you goes a long way. Or if you're feeling generous, you can donate to a charity where they work or pay for their coffee or meal. Let's look out there with live cam, expecting a lot of changes starting, I guess today, we're starting in the 50s, unseasonably cool. Welcome back everybody, 5.30 on your Wednesday, March 15th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far and I can't wait to see what's gonna find out with the weather. It's always changing, especially this week. Yeah, big changes tomorrow night late and then the weekend is gonna be just, oh, I think just to compare, Saturday, this past Saturday was 92. <laughs> oh, gosh. Nowhere near that coming up this Saturday or Sunday. Less than half that by Sunday for a high temperature. Yeah. So here's the look outside right now, and uh, we do have lots of clouds, but very clear picture right here because we still have very dry air in place. Temperature stands at 56 degrees. The normal low, well, it's just below that, so we are right about where we should be. 41 is the dew point, so we've still got 15 degrees difference in the air temperature and the dew point temperature, so we've got that very dry layer in the atmosphere, which is why if anything were to pop up as far as a sprinkle, I think most of it would evaporate before it reaches the ground. Very consistent temperatures around here thanks to the cloud cover acting like a blanket on top of us and again everybody's got the very low dew points but that's not going to last long because the humidity is going to start to make its return as we go through the day today oak is high it definitely went up from the previous day's reading and then pine and hackberry are both on the moderate side a little bit of mold and mulberry of course the updated count comes out in a couple of hours 67 at noon 73 for a high temperature today so once again right just about where we should be. We did hit 70 yesterday, so slightly warmer than that today with plenty of clouds. Also, we're going to start to see the wind pick up somewhat out of the southeast, just on the, the breezy side. That's what helps to pump the humidity back on in here. Then as we go into tomorrow, overnight tomorrow, we'll have a couple of showers around here, then a few showers and thunderstorms, then more of those as the big front moves through. And yeah, cold and good chunk of the weekend is going to be wet as well. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Grab your jacket. <laughs> Traffic <laughs> authority. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tough to even just get outside. Yeah, day. you know what I told you yesterday, Mike, I have the turtlenecks ready, right? So let's get a look around town and show you what you can expect this morning on the commute because uh, it's getting maybe a little bit busier there at 410 at Jackson Keller. You can really just see uh, both those uh, north and southbound lanes or east and westbound lanes. Pardon me, just looking a little bit busier out there. 281 at St. Mary's 
not that bad, but we can really expect the commute to pretty much stay the same as we've seen over the last few days. Not a lot of folks out there, but still some of you have to head to work. So thankfully nothing major will slow you down, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few minutes or so. But be on the lookout. We know Texas crews are still out there in full force working to improve our roadways, so we want to make sure we give them plenty of room. We'll tell you what areas to be on the lookout for and areas you may want to avoid. But if you plan on coming into San Antonio this early in the morning, let's check out some of these travel times. I 10 westbound pretty green from Seguin 29 minutes at this hour and for our friends down in Lavernia, if you're traveling along 87 northbound, you can really expect about a 33 minute drive time. And right now for our friends down in Floresville should take you about 27 minutes to get to the Alamo City. But let's get it back uh, here on Transcat. show you what you can expect at 35 at Olympia. Yeah, maybe looking a little bit busier, but that's always expected. But I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of congestion out there. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. The morning commute will stay quiet, but we'll keep a close eye on things and give you those updates. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, Uvalde City Council unanimously approved an updated memorandum of understanding between the Uvalde Police Department and Uvalde School District. This happened during last night's City Council meeting. Alyssa Cole joins us live again to tell us about some of the new agreements. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, Stephanie. Now, there were some notable changes made, but before I get into that, it's important to note this original understanding of agreement, this memorandum was first approved back in September of last year, but last night, the city council unanimously agreed that Uvalde City Police and school district officers can share interchangeable leading authority in any necessary event. So to give you a better understanding, for example, if an emergency situation is happening, happening at Uvalde CISD school and city police officers are on campus and they have the ability to safely take action. They can do that as long as they communicate that with school district police officers. And while that's a simple update, they also made some updates and changes to names as well on that document. But before the unanimous agreement, one of the city council members, he asked an important question and he asked why DPS was not a part of that agreement and, you know, the city Council, they pretty much move forward with the understanding that DPS will have to make their own memorandum of agreement with Uvalde CISD and the police department plans to move forward with their agreement solely with UCISD. Reporting live downtown San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. All right. Also this morning, three years ago, the jobs outlook was dim as unemployment rose to record levels, but things appear to be turning around. This morning, we are breaking down the latest San Antonio numbers and experts predictions for the rest of 2023. So definitely we see we've seen the labor force grow about 70,000 people, um, but we also are still uh, at, you know, very close to historic lows of about 3.9. Some positive news from the latest jobs report. Unemployment ticked up slightly from 3.2% in December to 3.9% in January. We're told it's common after the holiday season. It's still better compared to the peak of the pandemic. Depending on what happens with inflation and maybe some things that are going on with the banking industry right now, um, we do see that, you know, we're going to continue to add jobs, you know, short of any kind of like major ca catastrophic thing that, that, that could happen in the next few months. And if looking, if you are looking for a job, there's a Brooks job fair happening next Wednesday. This will be a multi-industry job fair with 50 employers. We have all the details on KSAT.com. Topping your morning headlines, several deputies in Virginia are expected to appear at an appointed council hearing today. This comes after an in-custody death of an inmate earlier this month. The incident is being described by local officials as a, quote, horrible miscarriage of justice. CNN's John Lawrence reports. These seven deputies with the Henrico County Sheriff's Office were arrested and charged with second-degree murder Tuesday morning. They're accused of being responsible for the death of Ervo Otinio on March 6th. Three days earlier on Friday the 3rd, Henrico police responded to a burglary call and placed the 28-year-old Otinio under an emergency custody order. Officers say they took Otinio to a local hospital for further evaluation and later arrested him. The deputies told investigators after he allegedly became physically combative. On March 6th, Henrico County Sheriff's deputies brought Otinio to Central State Hospital to admit him as a patient. A few hours after arrival, state police called for a death investigation. Investigators were told Otinio became combative and had to be restrained and eventually died during the process.
Henrico County Sheriff Alyssa Gregory issued a statement that called Otinio's death a tragedy and said that her department is cooperating fully with the investigation of the Virginia State Police. The deputies are all being held without bond and are expected to appear in front of a grand jury on March 21st. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Despite some progress, Alzheimer's disease poses a growing concern in the U.S. And according to the Alzheimer's Association, the number of Alzheimer's patients is expected to double by the year 2050. Health officials say although some treatments look promising, many elderly people are still reluctant to talk about cognitive problems with their doctors. The Alzheimer's Association says people with memory issues should talk to a doctor immediately. We're also told the national cost for caring for people with dementia-related problems rose to $345 billion in 2023. 539, 56 degrees. Just ahead, a dying star caught on camera. You don't want to miss the new images into our newsroom. Outside with live cam. Mike says we'll be on storm alert later this week. He'll tell you when that might happen. Coming up right here on GMSA. People in Japan are finally getting to celebrate fully bloomed cherry blossoms as COVID restrictions start to ease up. They're popping up all over Tokyo and earlier than normal this year. They are special in Japan because they mean the start of a new school and business year. Check this out. NASA's James Webb Telescope has captured images of a star's dying moments. The image released yesterday shows clouds of stardust billowing out before it explodes as a supernova. The detailed image of the star shows dust heading out into space 15,000 light years from Earth. Doesn't even look real. That's beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous. 542, 56 degrees. More frightening moments in the sky and another near miss at a major airport, this time at Reagan Na Na National. Reagan International Airport, just ahead what officials are doing today to try and make things safer. Well, we have got this little puppy. No, I mean, he is just soft and cute. He as can is. Be. Oh, look. And he brought Kim with him. I know, I came from along. The San Antonio Humane Society. <laughs> Good <Is> morning. He... <laughs> no, puppy kisses are and so then, fun. And then the tail's going just. The tail is going bananas not over even here. Nothing. Is like he a, a little, little lab mix? Yeah, a little bit of a lab terrier mix. Only like a couple months old, two months old. So he'll you be, know. He'll be a decent size. <laughs> and boy, this guy. He will run yes. and run and great little run. Want to play? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, with everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Lots of toys. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why puppies need all sorts of toys. I know. And lots of I activities. Know. And I know. Each one and that, that yes. helps relieve all of that. That will be yes. good. That excitement mm -hmm. and everything like that. All right. The yes is coming up. And I don't yes know is if coming he is up. going to be royalty yet, <gasps> but. Got to get your El Rey Fido shirt. So these are on sale at our location. We have El Rey Fido that occurs where your pup can become Fiesta royalty. Mm -hmm. These are $15. Um, 100 percent of the proceeds go back to our pets just like Mr. Pip. Okay. So come and get then, your shirt. And then also if you are a metal collector. Yes. So they have got the fun little grab bags of all, some of the old metals. Yes. So some of the vintage old metals that we've got that maybe you know from 2020, 2021, uh, even 2022 or prior to that come to our location. These are $5. I mean you can't beat that. Yeah. Then how many are in there's what there's three, three of them three, of, in there? three yeah. of them in there for five bucks and then you can okay. get your t-shirt and come see mr pimp and maybe adopt a little and maybe you'd adopt mm -hmm. yeah well if you'd I like know. more information on this little guy oh he i ooh, <laughs> take him home uh, yeah, no i can't uh, head on over to the san antonio humane society 4804 <laughs> fredericksburg road 2267461 sahumane.org thank you dear thank, thank you. you mr boo 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 very good boy. I love his coloring. All right, now to another big story we're following this morning. An aviation safety summit is being held by the FAA. This comes after a series of near misses at major airports, and overnight we learned about another one. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the details. All right, we'll get to that story in just a moment, but let's get a look around town. Uh, we can see that things aren't too bad at 410 at WW White, but wider look does show that things may just be getting a little bit busier as we're inching closer to that busy morning rush. But as always, uh, I wouldn't say there's any need to rush, especially during spring break. Thankfully, uh, although we know a lot of kiddos are off from school and many of you may be off from work, the drivers that do have to head out are also getting a break on the roadways. You can see there uh, plenty of green on the screen and lots of construction that is taking place, but, but we've been 
been talking about construction for a little while now. I do want to get an update on our midweek gas prices. According to AAA, as of today, that average gas price actually went down about maybe three cents to three dollars and ten cents. We are looking at a state average of three dollars and six cents around the country three dollars and 46 cents so uh, it's a slight decrease from what we have been seeing uh, not where we would like to see it but every penny does count so thankfully uh, we're not seeing any increase uh, at this at point in time but as we get it back here on trans guide wherever your destination that leads you to whether it's the gas station or maybe out of town just remember to buckle up and drive safe thank you Stephen. Mm -hmm. you mentioned gas i'm not gonna get gas yeah price is still yeah, months. yeah, that definitely. Actually, right by my house, three, it was right at the money, uh, $3.13, which is what we reported yeah. earlier on Monday. Uh, but it's down. Every penny does count, but still, just not what we would like to see. But hmm. today will be the day to get it before it gets super cold. Well, yeah, so you're not standing there at the gas pump <laughs> yeah. this weekend yes. when it's wet and cold, especially on Sunday and Monday. Well, so and think about it, too. Um, we haven't had to worry about tire pressure in a while. Right. That's and the point. tire pressure is going to drop again going into the colder weather. So we may want to go ahead and get yes. inflated again. Good yeah, and, and remember, only check it on cold tires before you've been driving or something like oh, that. Yeah. So, all right, here's a nice little picture of the hummingbirds. And they are back at this little hummingbird feeder. They're going to need to put on a jacket this weekend as well. So thank you very much for the 11 feeders. Wow. Fant oh, there's a couple of them right there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, yeah, beautiful uh, thing. I was going to try and say something about hummingbirds there, and I couldn't think about it for a second. <laughs> anyway, we've got mostly clear skies right now as far as down here at the surface. You saw in this picture where it's a very, uh, very distinct shot right there, and you can see all the lights. That means we've got very dry air in place, but we do have a lot of clouds, obviously, and temperatures. That's kind of holding things fairly steady. We'll fluctuate a couple of notches here and there in the next few hours, bottoming out at 54, which is basically a normal low temperature and then get up into the mid 60s today at noon. High temperature makes it up to 73. Wind is going to be shifting around. We're out of the east primarily right now. It's going to shift around to the southeast somewhat on the breezy side, and that's going to start to pull in more humidity. All right, computer models want to try and scare up a couple of showers here and there. But once again, the air is so dry down here at the surface that I think if anything did crop up, it would probably evaporate before it reaches the ground. But then as we go into the late afternoon, evening, overnight hours, more humidity around here and any sort of sprinkles, yes, they will make it down to the ground. So there could be a few uh, light little showers around tomorrow morning for the morning commute. Then in the afternoon, we're going to start to see some showers and thunderstorms developing off to the east primarily and some of those could be on the stronger side. Then as we go into tomorrow night, here comes the front and this is going to be late tomorrow night early on Friday morning. Some of those showers and thunderstorms and some of those are going to be potentially strong to severe. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. Most of the area, basically all of our area is under some sort of a threat with severe weather, but you can see this uh, slightly darker shade. That's where it's going to be more of the incident isolated more scattered variety and again the majority of those are going to be further up to the northeast but we'll have one or two of them around here at least that potential humidity like I said it continues to go up throughout the day still fairly comfortable this afternoon just not as dry air as what we've been seeing around here and then like I said the humidity really starts to go up overnight into tomorrow and then the dry air moves on in as we go into Friday and behind that front. So here's our little bit of a, a kick of some milder air and this big, big front moves on through here. And notice how these upper level steering winds are right down on top of us. That's opening up the door for that colder air to move on in here Friday and then through the weekend and first part of next week as well. 67 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature then makes it up to 73. Kind of breezy today. Then as we go into tomorrow, a couple of uh, showers around the area and then a few showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Then tomorrow night, especially as the front moves on through here, that's when we're going to see the potential for a few uh, severe storms and it's going to be breezy on Friday. Temperatures will drop throughout the day 50 by the afternoon or even colder than that. And boy, cold weekend 50 on Saturday, 45 and rainy Sunday and Monday. Well, today 
It looks normal compared to everything else happening later. In the yes, weekend. and then, then we get the nice little warm-up tomorrow, and then the bottom drops out. So bundle up your hummingbird, I guess I would <laughs> say. So. Oh, a little hummingbird jacket, yeah. yes. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Parka with a hoodie or not? No, never mind. Too much. Uh, 553, 56 degrees. It's something we don't get enough of here on GMSA. We are talking about sleep. So coming up later this morning on Good Morning America, a look at whether CBD can help with sleep. That's on GMA beginning at 7. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're watching that nor'easter pull away, but also that storm in Southern California still inundated places like San Diego this morning. Those flood watches and now the severe storms on tap for Texas and beyond and the northern side with all the snow. I'll get into all of it. And the incident over international waters involving Russian fighter jets and a U.S. drone. Top national security official John Kirby is going to join us to discuss. And a look at whether CBD can help people who have trouble sleeping. Those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Major museums around the world are quietly recategorizing Russian artwork. This comes after the months-long campaign by a journalist and a historian who are trying to persuade U.S. institutions to relabel the historical works of art she believes are wrongly presented as Russian. At the Mo Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, two artists who were once labeled Russian are now categorized as Ukrainian, and a painting by a French Impressionist was renamed from Russian dancer to dancer in Ukrainian dress. Right now it's 557 on your Wednesday morning. Glad you're with us coming up right here on GMSA. We continue to track light traffic for the early morning commute 410 at Jackson Keller. We'll talk to Stephen Cavazos coming up. And again, the wild weather trend continues as far as a roller coaster of temperatures and a chance of storms over the next seven days. Taking a look outside with live cam, looking right back into the heart of downtown San Antonio. Midway through spring break 2023, we have one hour of news, weather and traffic next. <laughs> 